Hey, what is going on, guys? And welcome back to another episode of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, where in this episode today, we are answering a very interesting question that has been lurking around for the past few weeks with no answer, and that is, can Bodhi Rook end the mall meta in Arena? Ever since Bodhi was added to the game not too long ago, many people are chanting that the mall meta is over. But is it really? Mall Zeta teams are found in so many places nowadays, and if you aren't familiar with what the Mall Zeta leadership does, it essentially causes a chaos of a battle because there is so much evasion going on, so much turn meter gain, and as many people see, Bodhi's kit revolves around applying evasion down and removing turn meter, which has gotten people thinking that he is supposed to help end Maul's reign of terror in Arena. Another reason why this is a pretty important topic is because Bodhi Bodhi is the first character to go straight from release to a very accessible, farmable, free-to-play method on day one ever since TIE Fighter Pilot. And in case you're wondering, you can acquire Bodhi in the Galactic War shipments. So a lot is resting on this guy in terms of should I farm him? He's free-to-play. I don't have to wait several months for him to become free-to-play. And it's a very easy method of farming. And to answer this question today, we have various gameplay of a lovely individual who sent me this gameplay of a six-star Gear 11 Bodhi. We're missing a few pieces on Gear 11, but that shouldn't make too much of a difference. The one star should not make too much of a difference as well with max out abilities. And yes, this even includes Bodhi's Zeta on his unique. And to make this more experimental, we have Bodhi gameplay in a variety of lineups ranging from a full Zeta Rogue One team to something a bit more advanced for a free to play team such as having Rex and Palpatine together to a very accessible free to play team which has characters like Wedge and Biggs or Akbar with no Zetas and no demigod characters because we know that not everyone can obtain characters like Chirrut, Baze, and Palpatine. So we wanted to show you a variety of gameplay showing many different types of lineups that people across the game might be trying out. And every single battle is against a Maul Zeta team. So we can see how this works against teams that have a lot of evasion going on. Now this is going to be sort of a mini in-depth review. I will actually rank Bodhi Rook at the very end of the video, but before I do that, I want to point out something really quick. In almost all of this gameplay provided, they won essentially almost every battle, but be careful not to make the fallacy of composition, or it is also known as the fallacy of the whole to the part, because just because the whole team looks good and is winning battles does not mean necessarily that an individual part of that team is also good and for example to put this in perspective as a whole the rebel faction is very good in star wars galaxy of heroes therefore lobot must be good and as we know that is not true so i want you to keep that in mind as we go further and we will come back to this point later on so we're going to dive right into Bodhi's kit and why some people think that he could end or at least minimize the impact of the Maul meta and we first look at his basic ability known as Call Target. It inflicts evasion down for two turns. Very simple, essentially like the B2 Super Battle Droid who also can apply evasion down on his basic which reduces the enemy's chance to evade by 25%. And in case you don't know, Maul's leadership gives 20% evasion bonuses to Sith so evasion down hypothetically removes the leadership's bonus completely when applied to an enemy, increasing your chances to hit that enemy. Next up, we have the special, which is known as Spotter, has a pretty above average cooldown of four, where it inflicts an enemy with evasion down for two turns, which is essentially guaranteed and cannot be evaded. You also get to target another ally, and that particular ally you target gains offense up and potency up for two turns, plus is called to assist. And if the target ally is a rebel, Bodhi gains 30% turn meter. And the next special we have up here is known as Intercept Communications, which also has a four turn cooldown. And this removes 10% turn meter from all enemies, doubled on Empire, which cannot be evaded. And then afterwards, all your allies gain 10% turn meter. And if you have rebel allies, they gain double turn meter, which in essence is 20% turn meter bonuses granted to them. Lastly, we have Bodhi's unique ability known as Double Duty. This is his Zeta ability, which we do have gameplay of today. When Bodhi is active, Rebel allies also gain plus 50% defense. And at the end of each of his turns, Bodhi grants offense up for 
two turns to a random ally who doesn't have it. Unlike the other abilities in Bodhi's kit, this one does not have much to do with evasion whatsoever, but it does help your allies apply more damage and gain defense when a Sith finally pops out of stealth and can't evade attacks, you want to whack them with as much damage as possible. So theoretically speaking, yes I can see why some people think on paper this could end the mall meta, but in application there are a lot of problems with Bodhi and let me point out a few of them with the first really important one that really holds him back is that he is not fast enough to apply evasion down and to remove turn meter as soon as possible. The average speed in this game right now is 127, and Bodhi's speed is ever so slightly above this average at 132 speed, putting him as number 40 in this game overall. And even in this gameplay, the mods used were absolutely insane. It added 102 additional speed to get Bodhi to 234 speed, which is way above what the average player can add to a character in this game. Most of my characters only have plus 80, maybe plus 90 speed. I have none of them going above 100, so that is insane. So even after the huge bonus of speed that the mods gave to Bodhi, we still have a problem. Mainly because most mall teams can outrun him still, even with those mods, because mall teams are generally paired with some really fast mods, plus at the beginning they gain 20% turn meter right from the very start. And as a result, characters like Darth Nihilus have a huge chance to increase Bodhi's cooldowns, especially after other characters apply debuffs like Sidious or Vader. And if his cooldowns are being increased, that means he cannot use his special abilities, which is meant to control evasion-based enemies and remove turn meter from very fast characters. You also might have characters like Maul come out and apply Daze, which prevents him from giving turn meter to his allies as well as calling in the assist. And yes, you could use characters like Cap Captain Rex to cleanse Bodhi, however, once Darth Nihilus has increased Bodhi's cooldowns, there's not much you can do about it until Bodhi's next turn, and as a result, against small teams, it feels as if Bodhi's not contributing much except trying to apply evasion down on his basic, and usually it takes quite a while against these type of teams to finally use his special abilities, which might end up doing something. But even on that note, his kit does not feel all that powerful against these type of evasion teams. Assuming Bodhi can use his special abilities, they just do not seem to make a substantial change when going up against Maul teams. Evasion down only on a single character, although guaranteed with his special, is not contributing all that much. Likewise, the 10% turn meter removal, although guaranteed, is also feeling very insignificant against these very quick teams, considering that Vader-led teams can remove a lot more turn meter with a higher frequency since any attack from the Empire or Sith removes turn meter and it does not require one to wait for a four turn cooldown to finally use this special. So from this gameplay it feels as if he is contributing very little through his anti-evasion abilities and you'd most likely do a whole lot better with him out of the equation but I do have to say I really do enjoy the ability known as spotter because besides the fact he is guaranteed to apply evasion down it is really nice that you can pick an ally of your choice to attack that individual character that you just applied evasion down on. By far my favorite ability and I do feel like as a last note that his unique is not all that helpful especially considering it has a zeta i'm not all that crazy about it i wish it gave a lot more which is why i want to move on to my last thing about what can we do to make him more deadly against a mall team instead of just giving him a zeta on his unique let's give him a zeta on one of his specials which maybe applies evasion down on all enemies which can't be evaded or why don't we have him remove a larger amount of turn meter maybe something like old ben or additionally be able to apply days in the situation where the oddball dodge might occur and you don't want them gaining any sort of turn meter or maybe give him a zeta ability which makes him immune to ability block or anything that attempts to increase his cooldowns maybe allow him to force enemies to reveal themselves out of stealth because if enemy is stealth you might not be able to pick the exact person that you want to attack so forcing them out of stealth essentially exposes them in the open which is very fitting for his ability spotter in my opinion and some other ideas that I have is to maybe make his kit a bit more advanced besides just having these minimal anti-evasion abilities make them a bit broader maybe if he was able to cleanse or ability block the enemy or increase his speed 
even further, kind of like how Jawa Engineer does. Maybe for each rebel, he gains plus speed or be able to gain turn meter whenever an enemy evades or maybe when an enemy goes stealth. This would ensure he is being more active in battle, perhaps maybe even go first because if a mall team's going all stealth, he can gain a ton of turn meter and potentially remove turn meter right away or apply evasion down right away. That would be critical and perhaps game changing. And now I just want to make a roundabout turn and get to my final thoughts and rank this character on the Hall of Fame. And overall, I believe that the battles won in this video were mainly a result of having Truth, Baze, Kenobi, Rex, Palpatine, Jin, etc, etc. He felt like the weak link in almost every situation and the benefit I felt was gained from watching this gameplay was very minimal to the team and it just seemed like he was simply bandwagoning off the success of all the other players because as we know, Baze and Chirrut and all those lovely combos, they are pretty deadly with or without Bodhi and you might be able to toss in Chewbacca in place of Bodhi and still win the battle because everyone else is doing a much better job than Bodhi. Although yes, he does provide a little benefit, I just don't think it's enough to replace him for the other characters that we have in this game. So overall, it appears he will not end the Maul meta, but he may be useful in raids perhaps, or there is some secret lineup that was not shown in this video that might make him amazingly useful, but overall, it does not seem like there is an amazing lineup for him to be in and completely excel and dominate a Maul meta team. But if you are looking to end the Maul meta, Captain Rex lead is by far one of the best decisions in the game to go with. He works great and I think there are just so many other characters even under a Captain Rex team that you can use over Bodhi to win the match as many people are already doing. And lastly, let's go and pull up that Hall of Fame real quick and see where I think Bodhi lands in the game overall. And from Grandmaster to Youngling, I am going to place Bodhi in the Knight status. He is not meta defining by any stretch of the imagination, but he is not a horrible character. He does provide some interesting things. However, it feels like he does rely on a very strong team, any type of strong team, for him to actually provide some minor benefit. However, if he is in a team, he is not providing anything crazy that you would not be able to gain from someone else. So hopefully you did enjoy this video, you learned something about Bodhi, and this answered your question regarding the whole Bodhi versus Maul conversation. Maybe I'm wrong about the whole thing. You guys are seeing the same gameplay that I am looking at, so you guys let me know down below if you think otherwise, if you agree, if you would add something else them to make him a much better character you guys let me know down below and if you guys like support me on patreon where we can hang out on a monthly basis and you can gain access to a lot of the materials that i use for my videos and be sure to subscribe so you're not missing a thing and we will talk again soon peace out